Hi, this is Bill for SparkyChannel.com. Today I'm going to introduce you to the ideal SureTest circuit analyzer which can help to identify wiring problems that can lead to electrical shock hazards, electrical fires, or equipment performance issues. The meter can test for bad grounds, false grounds, no ground fault protection, find areas of high resistance in the circuit, and can help to increase equipment performance by finding areas on the circuit that have a high voltage drop when under load. First, I'll demonstrate wiring verification. You plug the extension cord into the top of the meter and plug it into a receptacle. It takes a moment to warm up and do its tests. And here, in this column here, we have the three dots at the top. That means you're doing wiring verification. Okay, this is hot, ground, and neutral. If you check the table on the back, you'll see under wiring indicator, correct wiring, all three of the lights are lit. If the ground light is not lit, but the other two are, that means open ground. If all three of the lights are lit, but the hot and the neutral are flashing, that means reverse polarity, no lights at all, means open hot. And this meter has a very special indication for a false ground. That's, there all three lights are lit, but the ground has an F in the middle of it, meaning false. This means that there is a connection between the neutral and the ground, creating a false ground. To move to the next test, we're going to press this down arrow and we're going to go to voltage. See, we, the V is lit up now. And this is true RMS voltage at 120.8. The true RMS meters are more expensive than the regular meters. So we have RMS, hot, neutral. So between the hot and the neutral, there's 120.8 volts AC. Now, if I press the horizontal arrow, this gives you the voltage between the ground and the neutral. And this should never be more than two volts AC. This would show you a problem. If it was more than two volts AC, that would need to be fixed. I'll press it one more time. And this is peak voltage between the hot and the neutral. And this shows you the quality of your sine wave. We're currently showing 172.4 volts and that's about correct because the voltage we were showing was about 121.8 and if you multiply that by 1.414 then it should equal about 172. You see this is the maximum voltage of the sine wave. Now the next test will test Hertz and here in the United States the Hertz should be 60. Um, if it doesn't say 60, then you would need to contact your provider and find out what's wrong. Other countries have uh, different Hertz, like uh, Australia is 50 Hertz. Press the down arrow one more time, and we're going to go to voltage drop. So our voltage drop for a 15 amp load. Okay, a 15 amp appliance would be like my skill saw. That's that's 15 amps. You see, it also does 20 amp loads and 12 amp loads. Let's start with 15 amp loads. Okay, you with a 15 amp load on this circuit that we're testing, you have a 2.7 percent voltage drop. And you don't want any more than a 5 percent voltage drop. Here is your voltage under load, that's the V with the little L, it's a, it says 118.7 voltage under load. We just saw that the actual voltage is 121.8 approximately, but under load, under a 15 amp load, it's going to be 118 roughly. So that's a 2.7% voltage drop. So you don't want any more than a 5% voltage drop. For voltage drop, you should test all the receptacles on a given circuit. The last receptacle on the circuit should have the greatest voltage drop because the wiring run is the longest to that point. Some things that can cause a voltage drop would be 
too much load on the circuit, in which case you might want to take something like an air conditioner or a blender or something off of that circuit and put it on another circuit. So you, you would redistribute the load. Undersized wire for the length of the run can cause a voltage drop. Another cause of voltage drop is high resistance connection within the circuit or at the panel. So then you would have to locate the area of a loose connection and repair or replace. And you can see when we change the amperage of the load, okay, we just changed that to a 20 amp load, that increases the voltage drop. If you decrease the amperage of the load, that decreases the voltage drop. Now we'll depress the downward arrow another time, and this brings us to amperage. And we have ELL. That means estimated load online. And this is a very handy feature. It tells you how many amps are currently in the circuit. And right now we're using one amp. Uh, there's probably something plugged in on another receptacle that's using a little bit of current draw. Now I have a toaster oven that I will plug into this receptacle as well, and it's on. Okay, now it went right away to 13 amps. Okay, so that means that currently this circuit is drawing 13 amps. And up here we have 13 EL, so the electrical load is 13 amps. Uh, this is an estimate, it's not exact. To be exact, you would need to go to the main panel and use a clamp meter, but this is a pretty good test right here. Uh, 13 amps. If I unplug the toaster oven, okay, it goes back down to one amp, but the meter remembers the highest electrical load that occurred just a moment ago of 13 amps electrical load. You can actually plug this unit into any receptacle in the circuit and find out how many amps approximately, are being used in that circuit. Now we'll press the horizontal button, and that brings us to ASCC1 and ASCC2. This is available short circuit current, and it is figured in two different ways. What this is telling us is that if the hot, the neutral, and the ground were all tied together in what is called a bolted fault, and they also sometimes call it a dead fault, it's your worst case scenario. It's the very worst possible scenario. Uh, you would get 569 amps. So your regular 20 amp or 15 amp circuit breaker is typically rated to trip at anything below 10,000 amps. So we're only at 569 amps ASCC and we could change it to number two. This is a, a different way of calculating. It's 674 amps. This is safe under our circuit breaker. As long as our circuit breaker is good, its rating is 10,000 amps. Now if we press the down arrow one more time, that brings us to Z, which stands for impedance. Impedance is the effective resistance or opposition of an electrical circuit or component to alternating current. Each wire in the circuit has its own impedance. The hot is 0.16 ohms. The neutral is 0.06 ohms. And the ground is 0.04 ohms. Let's go back to the hot, because that one was pretty high. Okay, this is 0.16 ohms on the hot wire. For the formula, you first need to know what size wire you're using. If it's 12 gauge wire, you need to know that. Then you need to know the approximate length of the run. So this is 12 gauge wire and it's about 50 feet. And the formula is you multiply that by 0.003 ohms and I get 0.15 ohms. So this is 0.16. So this one's high. You see, this hot wire has too much impedance. So I need to look for loose connections. I'll look for problems at pigtails. You can look for a loose connection in the main panel. So this receptacle needs some work. 
However, the neutral line is good. Uh, there's, there's not very much impedance in the neutral line and the ground is excellent. The rule of thumb is that you don't want more than one ohm of resistance in the ground wire. So the ground's excellent, the neutral's excellent, but the hot needs work. So this is an example of this meter telling you some very important information. To test the GFCI, press the GFCI button once. And here we have the GFCI screen, GFCI being highlighted. It says 7.4 milliamps. So the test that we are going to do um, needs to be between 6 milliamps and 9 milliamps of leaked current between the hot and neutral conductors. So here we have 7.4 milliamps right between the uh, 6 and the 9 milliamps, which is just right. So what we do is press the GFCI button, and that did trip the GFCI outlet. So now I'm going to reset it. Okay, so it tripped in 118 milliseconds, and the leakage current was 7.4 milliamps. This time we're going to go to EPD, which stands for Equipment Protective Device. Okay, now we're on EPD. And the amount of milliamps that's going to be leaked between the hot and the neutral conductors is 30.8 milliamps. This is a test for, as it says, equipment protective devices. These are devices that are meant to protect equipment only. So if I had an equipment protective device that I would like to test at currently 31.1 milliamps, I would press the GFCI button and it would perform that test. In conclusion, I think that this ideal sure test circuit analyzer is fantastic. It gives a great deal of information about an outlet and about the circuit that it is in. This will be really helpful for troubleshooting a variety of electrical problems. I'll put a link in my video description for the ideal SureTest circuit analyzer. I'll put a link for the ideal alligator clip adapter for SureTest circuit analyzers and for the ideal ground continuity adapter for SureTest circuit analyzers. Also, I'll put a link for the ideal circuit breaker finder which includes an excellent receptacle tester. Thanks, I hope this video was helpful.